In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Holy and Most Blessed Sacrament, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Jesus is our Eucharistic love. He's the one who we have exposed to us very timely because being first Saturday and what we have about the first Saturdays is Our Lady's request that the first Saturday devotions be made known throughout the world to make reparation for sins against her Immaculate Heart against her immaculate conception, against her perpetual virginity, her assumption into heaven and her divine maternity. And the Eucharist is part of the Fatima apparitions. The first part of the apparitions at Fatima was a year prior to Our Lady appearing and that was by the angel of Portugal who brought to the attention to the children that Jesus is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament and was asking for reparation to be made in front of the Blessed Sacrament for sins committed, especially those who did not realise the real presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And how often do we come across this situation today? So it's a sermon on chastisement that I move to talk about today. Many people are committing sacrilegious communions. Sacrilegious in the sense that they are desecrating themselves and also the honour of God by receiving Jesus unworthily. And the plague of sin today of impurity has brought to such a sense now that people are able to justify that they are still in the state of sin when we take into account of what St Alphonsus Liguri, who is a theologian, who talks about this particular sin, that if you dwell on it just for a matter of seconds, the chances are that it is a grievous sin. In other words, requires confession before you receive Holy Communion. But a lot of people will say, oh no, that was uh, something which uh, I didn't really deliberate on at all. However, I'm questioning you and asking you to deliberate more on this area because if you've got the internet and also you've got access to the television and videos, which are secular videos from your video shop without any really selection, the first time you've seen them, they haven't been recommended to you, they will be infused with all sorts of immoral behaviour. And because of our concupiscence, though we are baptised, we have an inclination to continue to sin. And after baptism, the sin, mortal sin, needs to be confessed before you receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And there's large volumes of people. Very simply put, if we can consider people of my age, and perhaps even a little younger, will realise how the day before on Saturday, large numbers of people even up to a third of the congregation of a parish would be attending the sacrament of confession. You see today that there are very few confessionals open. They're only open for half an hour on Saturday and you might get one or two, maybe six in the bigger parishes of people attending. Yet on the Sunday, huh, we don't have people holding back like they did 40, 50 years ago and not receiving Jesus because they know that there is a grievous sin they are going receiving Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament by way of communion. What are the sins of today? It's non-fulfilment on Sunday, the obligation, the day of obligation. And just remember also uh, on the 15th, which is Wednesday of this month, it's a holy day of obligation. It's necessary to go to Mass. With that sin, people tend to think, well, I can continue, I can go when I want to go, I can go uh, because it's great to go on Easter Sunday and also on Christmas. We were able to bring the whole family together and they come in from different countries and other suburbs or maybe even from the country and we're all together as a family and we all go up and receive Jesus. Huh? 
Uh, but they're not in the state of grace. So how can there be this union? as a visible union, but it's not an interior union with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. In other words, you need to be in the state of grace. And most parents realise that their children and even the parents themselves are living in a concubine type of arrangement where they aren't faithful to their spouse because it's become so confused today, the separation has occurred, they're lonely, and in their loneliness they go and seek out companionship either are for themselves. And that isolation that they go into is then, well, Jesus is coming to us through this other person. Huh? But before you know it, the sins of impurity start to accumulate and then it becomes a quiet sin and they still go and receive Holy Communion. It's not to be. If you are to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, you are to be free from all mortal sins. And in so doing, you then create a union within the body of Christ here on earth. Now, if you start to receive Jesus unworthily, you'll get sick and you'll bring the body of Christ also into sickness, which is a, a laxness in the faith, which we see now that we lack that Catholic action of wanting to fight for those areas where governments are instituting laws against life. How often do we see when we go outside abortion clinics the tiny number of people who are prepared to be seen. It's not a public demonstration. All it is is people praying and it's an opportunity for those poor mothers who are going to either seek counsel or to go to have an abortion. It's their last chance to revert their decision. And when they do come out, it's also an opportunity to give them their first act of mercy. What I'm saying is to live the Catholic faith, to have the strength, you need to be fortified with the Eucharist. And as was said in the Mass earlier, daily communion is what is necessary in these times. And many saints have said that if you're not going to daily communion, then you can't arrange your own time properly. People say that we don't have time to go to Mass every day. We've got other things to do. Well, the saints are saying bad time management. You can get there if you want. And when you consider the amount of uh, churches which have the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass in Perth, there's plenty of Masses at different times of the day and you can arrange yourself with your flexi time to do so. The same also with Jesus present, the Blessed Sacrament of Adoration. You can get into churches and there see and be present there with the one who had given himself to us he always wanted, from the beginning, before time began, before he, he came, he came to save us in the sense that he came to be amongst us. And to be amongst us, yes, he was able to save us, but he wanted to come anyway, even if sin, his eternal plan was, even if there hadn't been sin, he still would have wanted to come and dwell amongst us. He still would have been a child of Mary. And because he became a child of Mary, he wanted to be amongst us for all time in the Blessed Sacrament. So how fortunate we are, and yet we don't realise the importance of this most efficacious, the summit of our faith in Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. One of the things, talking about that sin of impurity, St John Vianney, he had a great devotion to J. John the Baptist, or so as you heard earlier, to St Philomena, but St John the Baptist had a arched etching over his altar. He lost his head because of a dancer. How often do we lose our head because of some urge that we have for a lustful relationship. If people truly love one another, they wouldn't want to be damning one another by partaking in immorality. So consider what love is. We're not distinguishing between the movements of the passion and also the sanctification of one through a friendship which will enable that person to reach higher goals, which is heaven. And the best way for people to meet in that way is to have chaperones. Uh, we can't be going and visiting unless we have chaperones with us. You'll find that the Legion of Mary, they go with twos. Uh, when you're doing visitations, minimum of two. It's a criteria in the handbook. And also for those who think that they're going to minister to one another, um, that's, not, that's going to lead to sin.
consider these things because in many cultures they seem to allow that hiddenness of impriety and impurity and it is something which is a root of damnation so much so that Our Lady mentioned it at Fatima it is the sin which causes most to go to hell. St. John Vianney talked about the blessed sacrament. I throw myself at the foot of the tabernacle like a dog at the foot of his master. How often do we enter a church and just go down on our knees? All of us know that if we do the exterior movements of the body, sooner or later, or more sooner than later, will the interior disposition also be so humble that you'll realise what you're doing, which is acknowledging the presence of your God who has humbled himself to dwell amongst us in the tabernacle, humbled himself to such an extent that he is the servant, the servant to us where we can move him wherever we want. In other words, how more humble? No one is as humble as Jesus. And he's asking us to humble ourselves, to hear what is being spoken. He wants us to be with him in heaven. He wants the body of Christ built up. And in order to do that, we need to ascertain those areas of sin which we're involved in and those structures where we put ourselves in which will only lead to sin. We need to break away from them and realise that we have a role, not only for our own salvation, but we're not to scandalise and bring other people into sin. And when we're able to do that and take some hard decisions, the grace is there. God will give you all the grace, but you're not to be going back on your thoughts of why it could have been and using your sensory to determine what you're to be doing. You have to rationalise out what these movements are, and in order to do that, you need to pray. And by praying, you will become aware of those areas in your life which are not in accordance with the will of God. You'll know that there are occasions of sin which come up every day. Unless you get past them, you're not going really anywhere and you may even miss purgatory and finish up in hell. Love Jesus with the heart of Mary. She's your mother. She's the one who's necessary. She gave us Jesus and Jesus gave us his life. He's given us his body and blood, soul and divinity and holy communion. And he's also given us his mother. So turn to her in all temptations and you will find that there will be a grace given to you to avoid. But you must ask for this grace. And at the end of the day, there's a very simple consecration, which is that of the wearing of the scapula and enrolment and also the miraculous medal. You're all invited to come up for that. It will be given later on. When you become a child of Mary, you'll find it doesn't mean things are going to get easier, but she's going to bring you into a circle of friends which you haven't had any opportunity of meeting until the mother introduces them to you. So don't be afraid. Continue to say the rosary no matter how difficult and awkward it is and go to Mass more often and you'll find that the rosary, you'll meet that criteria of being able to say the rosary every day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.